Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on variance analysis. In this presentation, I'm going to examine the reconciliation of budgeted profit with actual profit. Reconciliation of budgeted profit with actual profit. Before proceeding to this lecture, I believe you must have watched my presentation on materials variances materials variances labor variances variable overheads variances fixed overheads Variances, six variances. So this reconciliation will be a knowledge brought forward from my previous lectures. If this is your first time of coming across my channel, please click on the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be receiving a notification message each time I drop a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. So, back to the business of today. Reconciliation of budgeted profit with actual profit. So, I believe with this, you will be able to prepare the income statement or profit statement or operating statement. You may call it income statement or profit statement or operating statement. Operating statement. Sometimes you may be given the budgeted profit. And where it is not given, you will need to calculate that. So, your, and your actual profit, where it is not given, you may equally need to calculate it. Where you are going to have your revenue or sales, your revenue or your sales, less variable cost, variable cost. Our variable cost may include direct materials, direct materials, direct labor. Variable production overheads, or production overheads. Then you may have fixed production overheads, where you are using ab absorption costing approach, fixed production overheads. So, in our less. Less your closing inventory, closing inventory. Your closing inventory will be valued at the standard production cost per unit. Closing inventory will be valued at the standard production cost per unit. Valued at standard, standard production cost per unit that is closing in inventory so when you less that you have your cost of sales so you deduct it from revenue deduct your cost of sales from revenue then you arrive at the profit that is absorption costing arrive at the profit that is absorption costing if it is marginal costing the fixed production overheads will be treated as the cost of the period then you are going to use your variable production cost to value your closing inventory here so you may equally have your opening inventory if given so you are going to have your opening inventory here if it is given so it will, it will be valued the same way your closing inventory will be valued or the same way your closing inventory are valued. 
So that is operating statement or income statement. Now back to the business of today. So I, our focus is the reconciliation of the budgeted profit with actual profit. The reconciliation of budgeted profit with actual profit. Before your budgeted profit will be reconciled with actual profit, you must have calculated all the necessary variances. So all necessary variances will have been calculated. So you start with your budgeted, budgeted profit. This may be given. And if it is not given, then you calculate it. Your budgeted profit. Then from that, you let sales volume profit variance. That is, if it is based on absorption costing. This is operating statement. Let me put the title. Operating statement. Operating statement. Based on absorption costing. Absorption costing. Operating statement based on absorption costing. I said you start with the budgeted profit. And this may be given. And if not given, then you will need to calculate that. Then you let sales volume profit variance. Let's sales volume profit variance. This, you know, our variance will be analyzed into favorable or adverse. If it is favorable, you add it. And if it is adverse, you subtract it. Then, less your selling price variance, sales margin price variance. Sales margin price variance. This can also be favorable or adverse. So after that, we now have our cost variances. Cost variances. Our cost variances, you are going to analyze that into favorable variance or adverse variance. Favorable variance or adverse variance. So we are going to uh, the cost variance may include materials, material price variance, material price variance. It could be favorable, it could be adverse. Then we can have material usage variance. Material usage variance. This could be favorable as well. It could be adverse. So either of the two. Then we can have labor rate variance. Labor rate variance. Labor rate variance could be favorable and it may be adverse. Then we could also have labor efficiency variance. Labor efficiency variance. This could be favorable, it may be adverse. We may as well have idle time variance. Idle time variance. This is always adverse. It's always adverse. Then we have variable overhead expenditure variance. Variable overhead expenditure variance. It could be favorable variance and it may be an adverse variance. Then we may also have variable overhead efficiency variance. Variable overhead efficiency variance this may be a favorable variance and it could be an adverse variance then 
Fist overhead expenditure variant. Fist overhead expenditure variance. This could be favorable and it may be an adverse variance. Then we may as well have fixed overheads efficiency variance. Fixed overheads efficiency variance. This may be a favorable variance and it might be an adverse variance. Then we can as well have fixed overhead capacity variance. Fixed overhead capacity variance. If it is favorable, you have it here. And if it is adverse, you have it here. At the end of the day, you are going to net your favorable and adverse variance. If favorable exceed adverse, that means it is going to be positive here. If favorable exceed adverse, if you net it, if favorable exceed adverse, you have it to be positive. And if adverse exceed negative, eh, if adverse exceed favorable, then it will be negative. Then you now less this from your revenue. You less it from from what you have above, you less it from this. Or if it is favorable, you add it to this. If it is an adverse, you subtract it from this. Then you have the actual profit for the period. Actual profit or loss. It may be loss if it is negative. Actual profit or loss for the period. If it is profit, you have it to be positive. If it is loss, then it will be negative. So that is the format for preparing the reconciliation statement. That is, whenever you want to reconcile the budgeted profit with the actual profit. That is the format. That is the format of reconciling the budgeted profit with the actual profit. So, we therefore want to take questions as a work example. I want to solve a work example. This is from the past examination question. And this question can also be found in workout performance management by Omolenwa, Workout Performance Management by Omolenwa. QBD PSE. QBD PSE produces sovereign for international airline operators. The company uses a standard absorption costing system. The company uses a standard absorption costing system. The standard cost card for one unit for one of QBD PSC sovereign is as follows. We have material 1.5 kg and at the standard cost of 6 naira. This is the standard cost per unit. That is standard cost of 1 of QBD. This standard cost should not be, con should not be confused with the standard price per Kg. The standard price per kg is different from the standard cost per unit. 
This is the standard price. I mean, this is the standard price per unit. And the standard price per kg is different from that. The standard price per kg is not given. So to get the standard price per kg, that is kg is the raw materials used in production. Therefore, you divide the standard price per unit of six naira by the number of kg used for to achieve one unit of the output. So we have six divided by one point five kg. That will give you the standard price per kg. Labor is one point six hours. This is standard hours. This is the standard quantity per unit. This is the standard hours per unit, and you are given the standard rate per unit to be eight naira. The standard rate per unit is different from the standard rate per hour. This is the rate to achieve one unit of the product. This is the standard rate, eight naira. The standard hour, the standard rate per hour will be obtained by dividing the eight naira by one point six. Then we have overheads. Overheads. We have variable, one point six hours at four naira per unit this is price per unit this is the rate per unit so to get the rate per hour then you divide the four by 1.6 then we have fees the overheads 1.6 hours the same hour you have you use for labor will be used for variable and fees overheads so the we normally use the same hour so the same standard hours but for the expenditure variance, then you use the actual hours paid for. I mean, for labor, uh, labor rate variance, you use the actual hours paid for. Why the overheads, you use the hours worked, not the one paid for. So, fees the overheads is 12 naira per unit. To get the fees overheads rate per hour, then you have 12 divided by 1.6. You are given total cost to be 30 naira. Then the selling price is equally given to be 40 naira. You have production and sales information for April. You are given production. The budgeted production is 5,000 units. And the actual production is 6,000 units. The budgeted sales is 5,000 units, and actual number of units sold is 4,300 units. Then you have the budgeted sales revenue, sales revenue to be 200,000 naira, while the actual sales revenue is 164,800 naira. The resources used and actual cost for April were as follows. You have the material. 10,300 kgs and at a cost of 38,720. Then labor, 11,420 hours at cost of 71,200. Then overheads, you have variable, 29,650 and feast, 83,800. Then you were told the 11,420 hours the 11,420 hours given above include 2,270 hours of idle time. This was caused by unexpected machine breakdown. The idle time was caused by unexpected machine breakdown. All of the materials purchased were used during the month. All the material purchases were used during the month. That means there are no materials left in inventory required. Calculate the budgeted profit or loss for April. B. Calculate the actual profit or loss for April. C. Prepare a statement that reconciles the budgeted and actual profit or loss for April 2013 in as much as details is possible. So that is the question. So we want to prepare a statement to reconcile the budgeted profit 
with actual profit. You have to calculate the budgeted profit or loss for a pre. So solution to the A aspect of the question. So Q B D budgeted profit or loss for April twenty thirteen. To prepare your budgeted profit or loss, all information that will be used will be based on the budget. That means you are going to use the budgeted data. Remember your profit or loss statement. We used to start with sales revenue. Sales revenue. The sales revenue here will be the budgeted sales revenue. The budgeted sales revenue will be used. And from the question, you were given the budgeted sales revenue, sales revenue to be 200,000. So you have 200,000. That will be the budgeted sales revenue, 200,000. From 200,000 with less cost. With less cost. Now, the cost data to use. Remember, we want to calculate the budgeted profit. The cost data to use should be the budgeted cost data. You are given materials, labor, variable overheads, and fees overheads. The material you are given, this are standard. Standard is for a unit. And what you need is budget. That means this standard has to be converted to budget. Since you are given the standard cost, you have to convert this standard cost to budgeted cost. That means for materials now, you have the six naira multiplied by the budgeted production. Multiplied by the budgeted production of 5,000 units. For labor, you have eight naira multiplied by the budgeted production of 5,000 5, units. Variable overheads, four naira multiplied by the budgeted production of 5,000 units. And fees overheads will be 12 naira multiplied by the budgeted production. Now, let's do that. Materials, labor, and uh, overheads. So we have materials, labor, variable overheads, and the fees overheads. The budgeted production is 5,000 units. Multiply by the standard cost per unit. These are the standard cost per unit. The standard cost per unit of material, six naira. Standard cost per unit of labor, eight naira. Standard cost of per unit of variable overheads, four naira. And the standard cost per unit of fees overheads is 12 naira. So you multiply by standard cost per unit, you have material, material, six naira. Labor, eight naira. Variable overheads, four naira. And fees overheads, eight naira. So this will be 30,000 naira. This will be 40,000 naira. This will be 20,000 naira. This will be 40,000 naira. When you sum it up, you have 30 plus 40, that is 70,000, plus 20,000, that will be one, and that will be 90,000. 90,000 plus 40,000, 
So materials, six naira. Sorry, six times yes, six times five thirty. Eight times five forty. The variable overheads four. Fixed overheads is twelve naira. Sorry, this is twelve naira. So five thousand times twelve naira. That will give us sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. That is for fixed overheads. Thirty plus forty is seventy plus twenty ninety plus sixty one fifty thousand. Therefore, the total cost is one fifty thousand. When you subtract one fifty thousand from two hundred thousand, one fifty thousand from two hundred thousand, then you have the budgeted profit. Budgeted profit. 200,000 minus 150,000, then you will be left with 50,000 as the budgeted profit. Therefore, our budgeted profit is 50,000. Then, requirement B. Requirement B. You have to calculate the actual profit. Calculate the actual profit or loss for April. For April. You want to calculate the actual profit or loss. This time around, you are going to prepare the profit statement as well. Only that the data to use must be the actual data. You are going to use actual data, not the budgeted data again. So, we have actual profit or loss. Statement, actual profit or loss statement. That is requirement B. So we have actual profit or loss, actual profit or loss statement. You start with actual sales revenue, actual sales revenue. From the actual sales, you less the cost. The actual sales revenue, as given in the question, is 164,800. 164,800. So that is our actual sales Revenue for the period, 164,800. From that, you less cost. The actual cost for the period, which include direct materials, direct labor, Variable overheads, then fees overheads. The direct material cost, then the actual cost. You were to production and sales. You were so the resources used. An actual cost for April were as follows. The resources used. An actual cost for April were as follows. These are the actual cost details. Material is 38,720. Labor is 71,200. Variable overheads is 29,650. Fees overheads is 83,800. These are the actual cost. So, you have the actual cost. Materials is... 38,720. 38,720. Labor. Labor is uh, 71,200. 71,200. Variable overheads is 29,650. 29,650. And fees overheads is 83,800. 83,800. You sum it up. 
Let's add them up. 38,720 plus 71,200 plus 29,650 plus 83,800. You have 223,370. 223,000. 223,370. 223,370. Now, from this, we let closing inventory. You let closing inventory. Remember when we were preparing the budgeted profit or loss statement? No closing inventory was considered. I didn't say less closing inventory. Why? The budgeted sales in unit is the budgeted production in unit is five thousand, and budgeted sales is five thousand. Nothing was left in inventory. All units produced were so no closing inventory. But for actual production was six thousand, and four thousand three hundred were left in inventory. Uh, I mean, four thousand three hundred units were sold. The difference between the production and sales represents the closing inventory. So 6,000 minus 4,300, that will be 1,700 units. The closing inventory, our closing inventory is 1,700 units. You are going to value your closing inventory at the standard cost per unit. And our standard cost, total cost, that is the standard cost per unit is 30 naira. 30 Naira. So we have 1,700 uh, 1, multiplied by 30. That is closing inventory. Closing inventory. 1,700 multiplied by 30. Remember the 1,700 is the difference between the production of 6,000 units and sales of 4,300 units. Then the 30 Naira is the standard cost per unit. So, uh, 1,700 times 30, that will give us 51,000. Therefore, our closing inventory is 51,000 Naira. So, if you subtract 51,000 Naira from 223,370, 223,370 minus 51,000, then you have 172, 172,000, 172,000, 370, 370. So you now less this from our sales. So the cost exceeds revenue. So that means the, we have profit or loss. In this case, this will be a loss. Profit or loss. By putting loss in bracket, that means where it is negative, it will be a loss. 164, 800 minus 172, 370. Then you'll be left with difference of 7,570. 7,000, 7,570. This is a loss. That is why I put it in braces. 7,570. That is the actual loss for the period. Then, requirement C. In the requirement C, you have to prepare a statement. Prepare a statement that recognizes the budgeted and actual profits or losses for April 2013 in as much as details as possible. So you want to reconcile the budgeted profit of 50000 with the actual loss of 7570 obtained. So to do that, you will need to compute all necessary variances. Now, we want to compute the variances. So number one, we are going to compute materials variances. So materials, materials, variances. For our purpose, the relevant material variances for our reconciliations are material price, 
we have material price, material usage, and usage variance. These are the relevant material variances for the purpose of our reconciliation. If you have gone through the format I gave you, you will see the price and usage variance there. Now, you will need to compute the material price variance. Number one, material price variance. Remember, if you have watched my previous lecture, I said variance is the difference between the standard and actual. Therefore, material price variance will be the standard price and actual price multiplied by actual quantity purchased. The standard price minus actual price multiplied by the actual quantity purchased. Now, let's go back to the question. What is the standard price of material? The standard price. The standard price. You know, the material purchased. This is this is this standard price of Cicera is based on the standard price for a unit of the product material you use for to produce one unit of the product. This is the standard material price per unit, and it is the one you use in production. We need, therefore, you will need the standard price per kg. The material used in production is not the output; it's not unit, but it's in kg. So the standard price you will need is the standard price per kg. Therefore, what will be the standard price per kg? I've told you earlier that to compute the standard price, the standard price will not be at, you divide the 6 by 1.5. 6 divided by 1.5, then we have 4 naira. 4 naira per kg. So 1.5 kg times 4 naira per kg will give us 6 naira. Then, labor. The labor used in production, the cost of labor used to achieve one unit of the product is 8 naira. And a labor is paid at, uh, is paid per hour. What is the labor hourly rate? What is the rate per hour? To get the labor rate per hour, we have 8 divided by 1.6. 8 divided by 1.6, that will give us 5 naira per hour. For variable overheads, we have 4 divided by 1.6, 4 divided by 1.6, then we have 2.5 naira per hour. For fixed overheads, we have 12 divided by 1.6 that gives us 7.5 naira per hour so we want to compute the material price variance it's not the, it's the standard price we need it's not the standard price per unit of the product it is the standard price per Material use, per kg of material use in production. So we have the standard price minus actual price multiplied by the actual quantity purchased. So, which is, you are given the actual cost of materials. The actual cost is given materials. The material used is 10,300, cost 38,720. Then, if you like, you may just open the bracket in the formula. If you open the bracket now, it will be actual quantity times standard price, which is standard price times actual quantity minus actual quantity times actual price will be actual price times actual quantity. The standard price of material is given to be 4 naira per kg. 4 naira per kg. That is the standard price. Actual quantity of material used in production is 10,300. This is the actual quantity. 10,300. So now, substituting into the formula, the standard price is 4 
times actual quantity 10,300 minus actual price times actual quantity and actual price actual price times actual quantity is the same as the actual cost and the actual cost of material is 38,720 38,720 minus 38,720 if you have 4 times 10,300 then we have 41,200 41,200 minus 38,720 minus 38,720 then you have 2,480 therefore material price variance is 2,480 the standard price is greater than the actual price so it is favorable it's a favorable variance that is material price variance is a favorable variance then the second variance we are going to compute as to the materials is material usage variance material usage variance which is standard quantity based on actual production minus actual quantity multiplied by the standard price so please i would advise you go over my previous lectures so that you'll be able to understand the application of each of these concepts the standard quantity of material is 1.5 based on actual production and our actual production is 6,000 units. Production, actual, actual production is 6,000 units. So the standard quantity is 1.5. Therefore, standard quantity based on actual production will be standard quantity based on actual production will be 1.5 times 6,000 units. So that will be you no know, 1.5 kg times 6,000. Then we have 9,000 kgs that is the standard quantity if our standard quantity is 9000 minus our actual quantity the actual quantity of material used in production is given to be 10300 10300 10300 multiplied by the standard price multiplied by the standard price our standard price of material per kg is 4 naira is 4 naira per kg so 4 naira therefore material usage variance material usage variance 9,000 minus 10,300, that will be 1,300 times 4. Then we have 5,200. 5,200 adverse. Because more materials were used than planned. So it is an adverse variance. Having computed the material variances, we therefore want to compute the labor variances. Labor variances. The relevant variances of labor, or uh, those labor variances that will be relevant for reconciliation, will be the rate variance, efficiency variance, and the uh, idle time, idle time variance. These are the relevant variances for our reconciliation. So we want to compute labor rate variance now. Labor rate variance. I said labor rate variance is standard rate minus actual rate multiplied by actual hours paid for. Actual hours paid for, not actual hours worked. That is for labor rate variance. Go back to the question. What is our standard rate? The standard rate of labor. The standard rate, labor 1.6 hours at 
5 naira per hour. The rate per hour is 5 naira. That is our standard rate. This is the standard rate per unit. The standard rate per unit is 8 naira. And this is the rate per hour, 5 naira. So what we need is the rate per hour. Multiply by the uh, minus actual rate. And you are given the actual labor cost. Actual labor cost is given to be 71,200 on 11,420 hours. So, if you divide this, the number is a continuous variable in order to get the actual rate. So, to avoid the rounding of error, so that is why I'm going to open the bracket as well. So, we have standard rate times actual hours paid for minus actual rate times actual hours paid for the stand i want to know that the actual rate times actual hours paid for is the same as actual labor cost that is the same as actual cost the standard rate as given in the question the standard labor rate is five naira per hour and the actual hours paid for, actual hours paid for is 11,420. So we have the standard rate, which is 5 naira times 11,420 minus actual cost. Actual cost of labor, and that is given to be 71,200. That is actual cost of labor, 71,200. 200. Therefore, our labor rate variance five times five times uh, eleven thousand four twenty. Then we have fifty one thousand seven hundred. This is fifty one thousand seven hundred minus seventy one thousand two hundred. Then we have. 14,100. 14,100 is adverse. It's an adverse variant because the actual cost exceeds the standard cost. The actual exceeds standard. That is labor rate variant. That is 14,100. Then I want to compute the second one, which is labor efficiency variance labor efficiency variance which is standard hours based on actual production minus actual hours worked let me add w to it actual hours worked multiplied by the standard rate that is labor efficiency variance. Standard hours based on actual production minus actual hours worked multiplied by the standard rate. What is our standard hours of production? Go back to the question where you have labor, the standard. The standard hours is 1.6. Based on actual production, I've told you that you have to flex it. The actual production is 6,000. That will be 1.6 times 6,000. 1.6 hours times 6,000 units. That will give us 1.6 times 6,000. Then we have 9,600 hours. That is the standard hours based on actual production. Then what is our actual hours worked? Actual hours worked. You are given the actual hours paid for. Workers were paid for 11,420 hours. They were paid 71,200 for 11,420 hours. In the footnote, you were told that the 11,420 hours include 2,270 hours of idle time. If 
idle time hours is included in that 11,420. 11,420 hours minus 2,270 hours of idle time. That means the hours they work. 11,420 minus 2,270. Then we have 9,150 hours. That is the actual hours the workers were engaged. Now, labor efficiency variance. Standard hours based on actual production. Our standard hours of production is 9,600 minus actual hours worked, which is 9,150 hours multiplied by the standard rate. What is the rate per hour since these are in hours? What is our labor rate per hour, the standard rate per hour? And that is 5 naira per hour. 5 naira per hour. So if you have multiplied by 5 naira per hour, therefore, our labor efficiency variance will be 9,600 minus 9,150. Then you have 450. 450 times 5. Then we have 2,000. 250 favorable. The actual hours worth is less than planned. So it is a favorable variance. 2,000. 250 favorable. Now, three. I do time variance. I do time variance. So I are given the idle time of 2270. 2270 multiplied by the standard rate of 5 naira. I've told you that our idle time is always an adverse variance. 2270 multiplied by 5. Then we have 11,350 adverse. It's always an adverse variance. That is idle time variance. Those are the relevant variances as to the labor. Having computed all the relevant labor variances for the purpose of our reconciliation, we therefore want to compute the Overheads variances. Overheads variances. The important overheads variances in these questions are the variable overheads and the fixed overheads. The variable overheads and the fixed overheads. After overheads, then we will as well compute the sales variances. So those are the relevant variances for the purpose of our reconciliation. So now we want to compute, we want to start with variable overheads, variances now. Variable overheads, variances. Variable Variable overheads, variances. Variable overheads, variances. The important variances as to the variable overheads are the Variable overheads expenditure variances, variable overheads expenditure variance, and variable overheads efficiency variance. The variable overheads, now we want to start with expenditure variance. Variable overheads expenditure variance. 
and we said it is the difference between the standard variable overhead rate and the actual variable overhead rate multiplied by the actual hours worked. Not the actual hours paid for this time around. We use the actual hours worked. The only one you will need the actual hours paid for is the labor rate variance. Aside labor uh, rate variance, for labor efficiency, for variable overheads and fees overheads, the actual hours worked will be used. So, what is our variable overheads standard rate? The standard rate is given to be 2.5 naira per hour. And this is the standard cost per unit. Then, what is the actual rate? Don't forget the same hour you use for labor will be used for overheads. Same hours for both labor and overheads. The actual variable overheads cost is 29,650. The actual is 29,650. And don't forget our actual work, actual hours work is 9,150. Not the one paid for. After the reduction of the idle time from this, so you get the actual hours worked. So if you have 29,650 divided by the actual hours worked of 9,150, it will give you 3.2404. It's a continuous variable to avoid the rounding of error. So we may open the bracket. So we have, if you open the bracket, it will be this times this. That is standard rate multiplied by actual hours worked minus actual rate multiplied by actual hours worked. The standard rate, the standard variable rate is 2.5 per hour, 2.5 naira per hour, multiplied by actual hours work, which is 9,150. You know, that was obtained by subtracting 11,420 hours, by subtracting an idle time of 2,270 hours from 11,420 hours. So that is how we got the 9,150. Minus actual rate as actual hours worked. That will give you the actual variable cost. And the actual variable overhead cost is 29,650. So we have 29,650. 29,650. So if you now subtract, so I mean 2.5 times 9,150, we have 22,075 minus 29,650, then we have 6,775. Therefore, variable overheads expenditure variance is 6,775 adverse, 6,775 adverse. The next one is variable overhead efficiency variance. Variable overhead efficiency variance which is standard hours based on actual production minus actual hours worked multiplied by the standard rate. The standard hours based on actual production and I think that has been calculated 1.6 times actual production of 6,000 the standard hours based on actual production the same thing was used for labor variance so we have calculated that when we're calculating labor efficiency variance. Standard hours based on actual production is 9,600 hours. 9,600. Minus actual hours worked that have equally been calculated when we're calculating labor efficiency variance, which is 9,150 hours. Multiplied by the standard rate. The standard variable by rate is 2 naira 50 cover. 2.5 naira. So we have multiplied by 
2.5 therefore variable overheads efficiency variance that will be 9600 minus 9150 then times 2.5 then we have 1000 125 favorable 1000 125 favorable having computed the variable overheads variances we therefore want to compute the fixed overheads variances fixed overheads variances remember so let us of all identify the relevant fees the wireless variances. Those ones that will be relevant for the purpose of our reconciliation. Fees overheads variances. So the relevant ones for the purpose of this reconciliation are the fees overhead expenditure variance. The fixed overheads capacity variance and the fixed overheads efficiency variance. The expenditure, the capacity, and efficiency. The expenditure, capacity, and efficiency. So I want to rub off the uh, budgeted profit statement. Don't forget our budgeted profit is 50,000. So we will still need it when we are preparing the reconciliation statement. The budgeted profit of 50,000 will still be needed. So I've rubbed it off. So you should remember that. So by the time I quote the figure. So now fees overheads expenditure variance fees overheads overheads expenditure variance i've told you that another word for fees overheads expenditure variance is the fees overhead budget variance which is the difference between budgeted fees overheads and the actual fees overheads. BFO, budgeted fees overheads. AFO, actual fees overhead. You can define it. But because of the space of the board, so I may not be able to write it in full. Budgeted fees overheads. Actual fees overheads. Now let's go back to the question. Now, how much is our budgeted fees overheads? If you look at the information you are given above, you are given fees overheads. The standard hours is 1.6 hours at 7.5 naira per hour, and you are given 12 naira. And you were given the budgeted production of 5,000 units. To calculate our budgetary fees overheads, you multiply the, this is the budgetary fees overheads rate per unit. You know this one is rate per hour, why this is rate per unit. You multiply the budgetary fees overheads rate per unit by the budgetary production of 5,000. Therefore, you'll be having 12 times 5,000. That will give us the budgetary fees overheads. And the actual fees overheads, actual fees overheads, is 83,800. So budgeted fees overheads, budgeted fees overheads, that will be budgeted, that will be the standard rate, standard rate per unit, per unit, not per hour, times budgeted production. That will give you 
the budgeted fees over here. Minus, we are given the actual fees over here. The budgeted fees over here is given to be 12 naira per unit. I mean, the standard rate per unit is 12 naira. And the budgeted production is given to be 5,000 units. The production and sales are the same. The budgeted production is 5,000 units. Minus actual fees over here as given is 83,800. So if you have 12 naira, multiply by 5,000 units. That will give us 60,000 naira. 60,000 naira minus 83,800. Then we have the difference of 23,800. Therefore, fees overheads, expenditure, variance is 23,800 naira adverse. 23,000. 800 naira adverse. Then I probably want to compute the fees the overheads efficiency variance. Fees overheads efficiency variance, which is the standard hours based on actual production minus actual hours multiplied by the standard rate. I've told you that the formula for efficiency is always the same. Efficiency is always efficiency. So, efficiency, the formula for efficiency of the labor, the variable overheads and fees overheads are the same. We need standard hours based on actual production. I think that has been calculated the other time. So since the same hours for labor will be used for variable and the fees overheads. The standard hours based on actual production is 9,600 hours. 9,600 hours. So we have 9,600, that is standard hours based on actual production, minus actual hours what? Which has equally been calculated to be 9,150 hours. Multiply by the standard rate. Note this is hours. Then this will be rate per hour, not rate per unit. It's only when you have this place to be unit that this will be rate per unit. So we need the rate per, per hour. The fees overheads rate per hour. And how much is that? Fees overheads. Note this is the rate per unit. Then this is the rate per hour, which is 7 naira 50 cover. 7.5. So we have multiply by 7.5 naira so 9600 minus 9150 that is 450 times 7.5 that gives us 3375 that is fees over hess efficiency variance Fees over S efficiency variance, and that is three thousand three seventy five favorable three thousand three seven five favorable. Yes, the next one is the fixed overheads capacity variance. Fixed overheads capacity variance. And fixed overheads capacity variance is the difference between the actual hour Actual hours minus budgeted hours multiplied by the standard rate. Actual hours. The actual hours word is 9,150. 
the budgeted ass. Budgeted hours. So you are given the standard hours per unit to be 1.6. If you multiply 1.6 by the budgeted production of 5,000, that will give us the budgeted hours. 1.6 times 5,000. Then we have 8,000 hours. Multiply by the standard rate. The rate, the fixed overhead rate per hour is 7.5. 7.5. That is the rate per hour. Therefore, fixed overhead capacity variance, fixed overhead capacity variance is 8,625. 8,625 favorable. 8,625 favorable. After fixed overhead capacity variance, we therefore want to compute the sales variances. Because of the space, I'm going to rub off the materials variances. The material variances, which we have computed, I want to rub that off so that I'll be able to work that there. So, sales variances, sales variances. The relevant sales variances we are going to compute are price variance and uh, volume variance. Sales margin. Price variance and sales margin volume variance. These are the relevant ones. Now, what is sales margin price variance? Sales margin price variance. I said that is the standard selling price. SSP means standard selling price minus actual selling price multiplied by actual quantity sold. Standard selling price minus the actual selling price multiplied by the actual quantity sold. Back to the question. And how much is the standard selling price? The standard selling price is 40 Naira. The standard selling price is 40 Naira. And how much is the actual selling price? You are given the actual sales revenue. Actual sales revenue of 164, 800. So if you divide it by the actual number of units sold, Divided by 4,300, then you have 38.32, and it's a continuous variable. Since it is a continuous variable, to avoid, we try to avoid the rounding of error. So let's open the bracket. We have the standard selling price times actual quantity sold minus actual selling price times actual quantity sold. The actual selling price as actual quantity sold is the same as actual sales revenue. Actual sales revenue. This A, A S R mean actual sales revenue. Now, what is our standard selling price? And that is 49. And actual quantity sold is 4,300. And the actual sales revenue is 164,800. 40 times 4,300, then we have 172,000. Minus 164,800, then we have 7,200. Therefore, sales margin price variance is 7,200 adverse because actual re revenue this is less than this that is why it is an adverse variance then sales margin volume variance sales margin volume variance and that is budgeted quantity bq stands for budgeted quantity 
minus actual quantity sold, AQS, actual quantity sold, times standard profit. Since we are using absorption costing, standard profit. So please watch my previous lecture for better understanding. Budgeted quantity sold is 5,000. The budgeted quantity is 5,000. And the actual quantity sold is 4,300. So we have 5,000 5, minus 4,300 multiplied by the actual profit. And how much is the, I mean, standard profit multiplied by the standard profit? Let's go back to the question. Remember, the total standard cost is 30 naira. And the selling price is 40. So the profit will be the difference between the selling price and the cost. So we have 40 minus 30, and that will give us 10. So the, the standard profit is 10 naira. 10 naira. So if you subtract this, you have 700. 700 times 10, that will be 7,000. Therefore, since margin volume variance equals to 7,000 Naira adverse. Don't forget, this, this standard profit is the difference between the 40 Naira, which is the standard selling price, and the standard cost of 30 Naira. That is how I got the 10 error. So this is alpha because the actual quantity you sell is lower than the budget, the quantity you budget to sell. So that is why it is an adverse variance. So having computed that, we therefore want to prepare a statement to reconcile the budgeted profit with the actual profit. So now let's have our reconciliation statement. A statement to reconcile the budgeted profit with the actual profit, having computed all the necessary variances. So, so reconciliation statement. That is where that is the next work to consider. So, for key building, the name of the entity is key building. So we want to prepare the reconciliation statement. QBD. 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 We want to prepare the reconciliation statement. Reconciliation statement reconciliation I'm sorry the body is watery give you the reconciliation statement a statement or statement to reconcile the budgeted profit statement to reconcile the budgeted profit Statement to reconcile the budgeted profit. Profit with actual profit for 2013. So you start with the budgeted profit. Remember, I told you when I was, uh, I wanted to rub it off. Budgeted profit, and that was fifty thousand naira from our first calculation. The first calculation on the basis of the requirement A. 
Now we've computed the sales margin price variance. Sales margin price variance. We've equally computed the sales margin volume variance. Our sales margin price variance. Sales margin price variance. We got seven sales margin sales margin price variance. We got seven thousand two hundred adverse. And sales margin volume variance. We got seven thousand adverse. Seven two and seven thousand. So we have seven thousand two hundred adverse. This is adverse seven thousand two hundred. And this is also adverse of seven thousand. Then we have fourteen thousand two hundred adverse. So if you subtract fourteen thousand two hundred from fifty thousand. Then you have thirty five thousand eight hundred. Then we have favorable variance and adverse variance. We have computed our materials, material price, price variance, and we got. From our material price variance, we got 2,480 favorable, 2,480. Then we also have material usage variance. Material usage variance, we got 5,200 adverse. 5,200 adverse. Then we have labor rate variance, labor rate variance and we got 14,100 adverse 14,100 then we also have labor efficiency variance labor efficiency variance from our labor efficiency variance we got 2,250 favorable 2250 favorable then we equally computed our i do time variance i do time variance and we got 11350 adverse 11350 adverse then we've equally computed our variable overheads expenditure variance variable overheads expenditure variable overheads expenditure variance and we got 6,775 adverse 6,775 then we also computed our variable overheads Efficiency variance. Variable overhead efficiency variance, and we got 1,125 favorable. 1,125 favorable. Then we've equally computed the fixed overhead expenditure variance. Fixed overhead expenditure variance. This overhead expenditure variance, and we got 23,800 adverse. 23,800 23, adverse. Then we equally computed the fixed overhead, fixed overhead capacity variance. Capacity variance. The fixed overhead. Capacity variable we got eight thousand six two five favorable, eight thousand six two five favorable. Then we equally computed our fixed overhead efficiency variance, fixed overhead 
efficiency variance and we got 1125 favorable fixed sorry fixed overheads efficiency variance fixed overhead efficiency variance we got 3375 favorable 3375 favorable so those are all our variances those are the variances we have computed now you sum it up let's sum it up 2480 plus 2250 plus 1125 plus 8625 plus 3375 then we have 17,855. 17,855. Then for our adverse, we have 5,200 plus 14,100 plus 11,350 plus 6,775 plus 23,800. Then you have 61,000 61,225 adverse exceed favorable by so when you subtract 61,225 minus 17,855 then you have the difference of 43,000 43,370 43,370 that is the total 43,370 is the total of this is adverse. So since it is negative, that is adverse, you now subtract it from 35,800. Uh, 35,800, then you'll be left with the difference of 7,570. That is the actual profit. 7,570. There is no space to write it here. No space to write it here. So put actual profit. Actual profit of let me just put it here 7570 so it should be under this should be under that 7570 it's a loss it's a loss because let me say actual profit or loss it's a loss because the adverse variance exceed this this I see this. No, this is negative. It I see this. So it will be a negative. So if you now, if you now check what was obtained from our profit statement, the actual profit statement earlier from requirement B, we got a loss of, we had a loss of uh, seven thousand five seventy, which is in agreement with that. So that is the that is all about reconciliation of budgeted profit with actual profit. Please, if you have not subscribed in the past, don't forget to click on the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be receiving a notification message each time I drop a new video. Thanks.